Summer is a lazy time for me. I'm lagging behind in my upload schedule big time. Doing nothing is great, but it's time to get off my butt and start working on a new video. In this one, I'll give you a few tips when it comes to prototyping on a breadboard to make final design easier and more transparent. Some of those tips I picked up from other people, but some I came up with myself. Let's have a look at them. My first tip you will find useful when in your project you use devices that require more current than Arduino can provide. This power supply module comes in handy then. We can power devices either via DC jack or via USB socket. Here is an on-off switch. Then we have some jumpers where you can decide whether you provide 3 or 5 volts and some extra ground, 5 volt and 3 volt pins. On the other side it has soldered in male header pins that allows us to plug this module onto the standard breadboard. Which devices require external power supply? This is a perfect example. 8x8 no pixel LED matrix. To lit all the LEDs in white color with maximum brightness we need much more current than Arduino can provide. It has three input pins, ground, VCC and signal. I have here a setup where I have my power supply module and Arduino plugged in. VIN pin of Arduino is connected to a positive of the power supply and ground is connected to the negative of the power supply to power the Arduino on. And you can see three additional jumper wires. The green one is connected to the negative side of the power supply and the purple goes to positive side. The grey one is connected via current limiting resistor to digital pin 5. So now let's plug in these jumper wires to the matrix and execute a simple code to lit all the LEDs white. You can see that they are all nice and bright. So the power supply module successfully powered Arduino and the connected LED matrix. My second tip involves LilyPad LEDs. Those LEDs are meant to be used to put Arduino LED designs on your clothing. You connect them with metal threads. They are nothing more than a small PCB with built-in LED and a resistor. I will now take two male header pins and try to solder this LilyPad LED onto them. Done. Let's have a look at this. Ouch, ouch, too hot. So now we have the LED module with built-in resistor that we can plug in on the breadboard. So here is how we would connect a standard LED on the breadboard. I will use the power supply we discussed in tip 1 and then we connect LED anode through current limiting resistor to positive side of the power supply and LED cathode to power supply minus. And surprise, surprise, LED lits. Now let's do the same with our LilyPad module. Again, LED anode and cathode are connected to power supply in the same way, but we no longer need the resistor as we already have a built-in one in the LilyPad module may seem not much of an improvement with one LED, but if you are connecting multiple ones, then believe me, it makes a lot of difference. On to next tip. This one will help us tidy up multiple connections, like shown here, by replacing jumper wires with custom-made connection wires. We will do it using scrap network cables. You have various types of network cables. You have category 6, 
then category 6a, and then category 7. I'll use the later ones. They are used for structural cabling of the office buildings. Inside, there are 8 wires that are thick enough for our purpose. Let's take a piece of that cable and take it apart. I'll get rid of the insulation first. Then, I will remove steel wire shield. And then, aluminium foil shield that protects individual cable pairs. We are ending up with 8 cables, 4 white, 1 blue, 1 green, 1 brown and 1 orange. Let's take a box cutter and create a connection wire by removing insulation at both ends of the wire and bending those ends so they can be plugged on a breadboard. Great! My next tip is to carefully choose the type of breadboard you are planning to use. A while back I created a project in which I was displaying animation on a small SPI OLED display. I used my custom made wires then, as when using standard jumper wires they were obstructing the view of the OLED display. It worked, but was it optimal? Not really. The distance from Arduino pins to OLED display pins was too big. This can be fixed by using small breadboards, like this one. This breadboard does not have power bus rails. You can mount them with a double side tape, but you can use it just once. So I would rather use 3D printed mount for those breadboards, especially when I plan to use multiple ones. So let's redo all that animation project using two small breadboards. Here I use short jumper wires, as in this setup they do not obstruct the view of the OLED display. Now all I need is to connect Arduino to the PC and load the code. It works and it looks more slick than my previous setup, doesn't it? My last tip is to use Arduino built-in pull-up resistors when working with push buttons. In this example, I would use the 7-segment display I built in one of my projects. I will use it to monitor the input from the push button connected to the Arduino pin. I include the link to the video that shows how I build that display. Feel free to check it. To connect the push button to Arduino, we connect one side of the push button to ground. The other side is connected to digital pin 9, as well as through pull-up resistor to Arduino 5 volt pin. This results in input signal being pulled up to high when the button is not pressed. To test it, let's create a simple program. Pin 9 value variable will keep current input from the push button. In setup, we set pin 9 as input. In loop, we read the state of the push button and use custom display digit function to output the red value to the display. Let's load it to Arduino. You see that it works. When the button is not pressed, the display shows 1, and when we press the button, it changes to 0. So our objective is to get rid of that resistor. But the display goes crazy when you do it. The reason is that the pin cannot determine its state when the button is not pressed. Pin 9 becomes floating pin and the input on the pin constantly changes from high to low. To resolve that issue, a small tweak in the code is needed. In setup function, instead of setting pin 9 as input, we set it as input pull-up. This activates the built-in pull-up resistor on pin 9. Now, when we load the code to Arduino again, the problem should be resolved.
And it is. Push button works as expected and we no longer need that extra resistor on the breadboard. This concludes this video. I hope you liked it and what's more important, you will find it useful. If you did, like, share and subscribe if you have not yet done so. Also, for as little as 1 euro, you can support me and become my patron. This will give you early access to my videos as well as some behind the scenes footage which will give you a glimpse at how I create my videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, I will see you soon in the next one.